Here's a quote from Marcus Aurelius, the famous Roman emperor. The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Take care that you entertain no notions unsuitable to virtue and reasonable nature. And here's Mother Teresa. God does not command that we do great things, only little things with great love. There are no justified resentments. You hear people say this all the time. I have a right to be upset because of the way I've been treated. I have a right to be angry, hurt, depressed, sad, and resentful. Learning to avoid this kind of thinking is one of my top ten secrets for living a life of inner peace, success, and happiness. Anytime you're filled with resentment, you're turning the controls of your emotional life over to others to manipulate. I became aware of how powerful this lesson was many years ago while sitting in on a meeting of 12 people who were in a recovery group for alcoholism and drug addiction. All 12 of those people were accustomed to blaming others for their weaknesses, using almost any excuse as a rationale for returning to their self-defeating ways. On a poster hanging in the room were these words, In this group, there are no justified resentments. Regardless of what anyone would say to another group member, no matter how confrontational or ugly the accusations, each person was reminded that there are no justified resentments. You may need to consider whom you resent before you make your own choice about whether this is useful for you. Resentments give you an excuse to return to your old ways. This is what got you there in the first place. Why resentments are there? You may be familiar with a popular television show called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? If the contestant answers 15 multiple-choice questions, he or she wins a million dollars. Starting with a $100 question, the person in the hot seat answers five questions until reaching the $1,000 level. At this point, the person is guaranteed to leave with something. Then the questions increase in difficulty. If the contestant reaches $32,000, again, there's a guarantee of leaving with that amount. So there are two crucial levels to attain. The $1,000 level, which is achieved by answering five relatively simple questions, and the $32,000 level, which involves five increasingly difficult questions. I've just related details about this TV program to present the idea of the two levels that you must achieve in order to have a chance at the highest million-dollar level of awareness. The $1,000 level is one in which you can learn to leave blame behind in your life. If you don't do so, you're going to go home with nothing. Removing blame means never assigning responsibility to anyone for what you're experiencing. It means that you're willing to say, I may not understand why I feel this way, why I have this illness, why I have been victimized, or why I had this accident, but I am willing to say, without any guilt or resentment, that I own it. I live with it, and I am responsible for having it in my life. Why do this? If you take responsibility for having it, then at least you have a chance to also take responsibility for removing it or learning from it. If you're in some small way, perhaps unknown, responsible for that migraine headache or that depressed feeling, then you can go to work to remove it or discover what its message is for you. If, on the other hand, someone or something else is responsible in your mind, then of course you'll have to wait until they change for you to get better, and that is unlikely to occur. So at the $1,000 level, blame has to go. Otherwise, you go home with nothing and are unable to participate at the higher levels. You must be willing to pass a new test at the second critical level, the $32,000 question, which is the final obstacle you must face in order to move into the more exalted realm of self-actualization and higher consciousness, the million-dollar spiritual level, if you will. At this level, you must be willing to send the higher, faster energies of love, peace, joy, forgiveness, and kindness as your response to whatever comes your way. This is the start of the uncrowded extra mile, where you have only one love to give away. Someone says something to you that you find offensive, and rather than opting for resentment, you are able to depersonalize what you've just heard and respond with kindness. You would rather be right than kind. You have no need to make others wrong or to retaliate when you've been wronged. You do this for yourself. There's a Chinese proverb, if you're going to pursue revenge, you'd better dig two graves. Your resentments will destroy you. They are low energies. And along the extra mile, you'll only meet others who have fully grasped this concept. The ones who haven't made it to this level are all back with the crowd who went out of the game long ago on an easier question, and most are still back there wondering why they keep going home with nothing. But I can assure you that they continue to blame others for their emptiness.
First, you have to get past blame. Then, you have to learn to send love to all rather than anger and resentment. The story is told of the enlightened master who always responded to outbursts of criticism, judgment, and ridicule with love, kindness, and peace. One of his devotees asked him how he could possibly be so kind and peaceful in the face of such disparaging invective. His response to the devotee was this question, If someone offers you a gift, and you do not accept that gift, to whom does the gift belong? The answer leads us to the extra mile. Ask yourself, why would I allow something that belongs to someone else to be a source of my resentment? As the title of a popular book says, What You Think of Me is None of My Business.